Well, I am so excited to be here with Kaylin Franz. She is with the Immigrant Legal Center, Director of Communications and Development. Kaylin, it's so great to see you again. You too. So good to see you. Always fun to chat. <laughs> I know. And so here we are um, a, a, from the last event that we're going to be talking about that happened about a year ago. We'll mm-hmm. be talking about that in a little bit. But let's just talk about Immigrant Legal Center. And who do you serve? What is the mission? Yeah, so Immigrant Legal Center, we are a nonprofit law firm um, with our headquarters main office here at 42nd and Center in Omaha, but we have offices all the way from Council Bluffs to Scotts Bluff and actually just opened um, a new office in Lincoln um, a couple weeks ago. So we're we're growing, we're expanding, the need is really, it's there and, and it's real. And so we're just trying to serve as many um, immigrant families as, as we can. And Immigrant Legal Center, um, we're a very unique nonprofit because of the number of attorneys that we employ. We um, have a strong conviction and belief that every single um, immigrant, immigrant family, man, woman, woman, child that's going through the immigration legal um, system here in the United States deserves um, representation by a qualified um, legal provider. And we at Immigrant Legal Center, because um, we have the, the experts in the field um, and those attorneys on our staff are able to take on those most complex cases and um, serve our our clients for the life and the duration of their um, of their case a lot of people are surprised to learn that it sometimes can take five seven ten years for a case to resolve which is why it's really important to have an organization like immigrant legal center that's here for for the long haul to be here for these clients and um, one thing that's also really special about Immigrant Legal Center is that we don't ever charge um, any of the families that come. Um, they get there. We are pro bono uh, to the limit, so that we don't charge um, any families that that we serve. How do I mean? I'm I'm curious, and this wasn't even on our talking points. How do you yeah. how how do you find attorneys? I mean, how do they find you, or you find them? Because I mean, that's. Uh-huh. Um, Wow, that's just amazing that, like you said, yeah. last to, up to 10 years. And that could, I mean, that could be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars for if you had to hire an attorney and these individuals don't have that kind of money and they need mm-hmm. that help. And I mean, that's why we're so um, grateful to um, the community support that allows our attorneys to really focus on providing that best possible service um, for our clients instead of having to worry about billable hours or worry about, um, you know, bringing money in the door. That's that's what I'm here talking to you about. Right. Like that's kind of where where we step in here so that our attorneys can really do what they're best at, which is serving our clients and representing them at the highest levels um, uh, that we think every single person, regardless of their ability to pay, should be afforded the highest quality. But we, um, our attorneys are, you know, they're passionate about their work. They're the best and brightest in the immigration field, you know, actively like doing litigation that's not only changing um, the lives of immigrants here in Nebraska, but across the country. And so we're just very um, excited about, um, you know, the growth opportunities that that we're having into Lincoln. And my my light just turned off, but that is not um, dimming the light on the work that we're doing. It is uh, really good. That they just change things. So yeah, but um, no, like we, um, our attorneys are are awesome, and I'm just so in awe of um, of the work that they do every day. Yeah, and because look, we're going to talk about the event, but the thing is also um, as an immigrant legal center, uh, I mean, these are people that don't necessarily know the laws of of you know the United States or the country, mm-hmm. you know, the country they're living in, and they desperately they need help. They need. Right. And that well, transition or tra- yeah. translation also. Yeah. So the immigration legal system, and I'm just going to preface, I am not an attorney. Um, <laughs> so nothing I am saying is any sort of legal advice or anything, sure. but is purposely complicated. It is so complicated that even if you do have a complete amazing grasp of, you know, the laws 
of the United States, like getting into the immigration aspects of it, it's just super complicated, which is why you need a qualified expert that can help you work through the forms, work through your options. And it's also changing all the time. So a relief that might be available today might not be available tomorrow. So kind of figuring out out that, but no, it's it's purposely complicated, and that's why um, we urge every single person to to seek um, legal advice and representation. Well, the food truck world tour, which has been going on for many many years, mm-hmm. is one way. First of all, it's a great event, but also a way to support um, your organization and, and what yes. you do. So, and that's coming up. Yes, yeah, it's just summer's summer's gone. We're into fall. We're into September. We are. We're ready. It's food truck world tour month. So we're, uh, we're excited over here. And, you know, uh, last year we, we spoke about, you know, some of the changes that we had made, um, to the event just, um, in response to, to the pandemic. And, um, we still have changes this year cause you know, we're not out of the woods at all, um, yet with the pandemic, but we've moved outside. We're going to be outside. We um, are at a new location at um, Simpson Park in Exarban Village. And we have, I think at this point, eight food trucks confirmed, still working on maybe one or two more. Is that the um, most ever? Is that the most ever? The most ever, yeah. So yeah. we're really excited. And um, it's going to be all you can eat. So you can, you know, try all different types of food. We also have, um, in partnership with our friends at spirit roll, a special, um, tequila tasting option this year. Um, and so kind of that's some fun stuff for the adults, but then we really want people to, um, you know, bring their kids and have their kids know and, and celebrate immigrants in our communities. And so we'll have some face painting, balloon animals, um, and special actually children's, um, ticket prices, um, for those little ones who, um, are able to join us. So, family friendly fun Sunday afternoon. Uh, we're really excited. We've got some great entertainment lined up. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be great. Yeah. I, and I'm so excited because again, as we, as we wrap up on, on the conversation, I mean, looking at last year, you totally pivoted and mm-hmm. you had a drive through, um, you know, with, with people, with the food trucks. And then this year we're able to get back out into an open space yes. um, where people can move about and also, you know, social distance and, and what, and mm-hmm. whatever is required, but having, but this is, you guys do such a great job. And this is just one way to, first of all, have a explosion of taste in your mouth yes. um, and, and try new uh, restaurants or new different food trucks um, uh, associated with our community mm-hmm. and also give back. So yeah. I'm excited. And then I will add, I know we're kind of wrapping up, but um, we're also really just honored to have our um, our event co-chairs, um, Karen and Taylor Borchert and Dusty and Marlena Davidson. And then this year we have um, maybe the largest honorary uh, chair group that I think we've had, but we're just so excited to be honoring all of the former living Omaha Central High School principals for um, their contributions to welcoming immigrant refugee families in um, in Omaha specifically. Yeah. Um, you know, Omaha Central High plays such an important role and a lot of new Americans in their, you know, educational journey, you know, school is sometimes the first kind of entry that you have once you arrive um, here in, in Omaha and in our state. And so we're really excited to, to honor them as well for all of the work that they have done to help create a welcoming community for immigrants uh, here in Omaha. All right. So September 26th. Yes. September 26th. Sunday afternoon, Exarvin Village, Stinson Park. Be there. What is that? term be there or be square be there Uh, or be square yeah (laughs) but anyway that's kind of silly but it's going to be a fabulous event so I'm looking forward to it and Kaylin thank you so much for joining me today yes thank you and you can get tickets at immigrantlc.org slash food truck (laughs) yeah that's important too so um (laughs) buy tickets and again thanks so much yes see you there okay bye
Welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with John Glenn, Vice President of Development for the Madonna Rehabil Rehabilitation Hospital. That's kind of a tr tongue twister for me. Rehabilitation <laughs> Hospital here in Omaha, Nebraska. John, thank you so much for joining me. Andy, it is a pleasure to be here as always. You have such passion for our community. Uh, it's an honor to be on your show. Well, I'm excited. We're going to talk about the um, Miles for Madonna coming up at the end of September, but I really want to talk first about you're celebrating your fifth anniversary of the hospital being here in Omaha, Nebraska, and you guys do so many great things um, for so many people. So let's just start there and tell me about your mission and, and what it's all about. Well, it's hard to believe we're celebrating our fifth anniversary. Uh, we opened in October, ex exactly October 4th, 2016. It'll be five years this October. Um, and we're really yeah. grateful uh, to be part of the Omaha community. It's an outstanding medical community. Uh, and Madonna really has um, filled a need in the healthcare continuum. Uh, Madonna um, is world-class rehabilitation. So we work with patients um, who are trying to rebuild their lives from uh, traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, stroke, um, severe pulmonary conditions. Um, so we're really world-class rehabilitation working with those patients. And I might also add, uh, we have a specific unit for cancer rehabilitation. Uh, Omaha is blessed with some great acute care hospitals, including the, the Buffett Cancer Center. Sure. They're doing amazing work with cancer patients and they're coming to Madonna to help rebuild their lives um, from the great work that the Buffett Cancer Center folks did to keep them alive and to save their life, now we're helping to rebuild it. So it's a real partnership in the community yeah. with all the hospitals, and we're grateful just to be here to do our part to help this wonderful city. Yeah, um, I mean, absolutely, because it takes it takes several entities to, um, you know, you're talking about an individual, and they are rebuilding their lives. And you know, as I remember when I took the tour, I mean, it's been like two or three years now, um, but I remember I was, I was in there and, and you had like an area to re-equate people with grocery shopping and, and car service and, and going up and down stairs. I mean, it was just, it was first class and it was so, the attention to detail that you, that your facility gives people to when they have to, have to go back and want to go back into their home and live a life, you know, live their lives. So um, just, I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge you for that, but let's talk a little bit more about the hospital and then we'll talk about Miles for Madonna and, and what those patients do receive and, and how important it is. You bet. Um, inside our rehabilitation gym, we have about $3 million worth of really cutting edge technology and rehabilitation, you know, downstairs in our long term acute care hospital. Those are folks that are suffering from complex um, illness or injury uh, that need to heal from that complex medical problem, as well as begin rehabilitation. Upstairs is our acute rehab hospital. That's where folks do six to eight hours of rehab a day. So in this rehab rehabilitation gym with this outstanding cutting edge technology, they're really working on rebuilding um, their muscle mass, they're rebuilding their coordination, and, and in a lot of cases, rebuilding um, the pathway in their brain so the nerves and, and can fire. It's called neuroplasticity. It's the, the way the brain remaps itself. You have to have hundreds and hundreds of repetitions for the brain to rewire itself. We do that in the gym, but as you mentioned a second ago, uh, in practical terms, we also want folks to go from the weightlifting class, like it, you know, the, the Huskers do, to the field. And the field is um, the grocery store um, we have on campus. It is the mechanic shop. It is the laundry mat. It is the bedroom. So people can do practical applications of what they built up in the rehab gym. They can go practice everyday skills so when they go home, they have the, the confidence to do this and the passion to do it well. So it's really a two-step process, um, the neuroplasticity, and then also the, the common everyday tasks so people can go home and live a productive, um, really good life. Yeah. And, and again, before we talk about Miles for Madonna, I just want to say this, eight hours a day of rehab is it's probably harder to go. It, it's easier to go to work to an eight to five job than it is to do eight hours a day of rehab. Um, and the environment that 
the hospital, you know, presents itself and that people are doing this in, it, it's, I, I just want to say it's, it, it's stunning and it's uplifting and, um, you know, what, what the community has done and supported and donated for this hospital is just amazing. So and we, we would not be here without tremendous community support uh, yeah. and tremendous internal support from our staff. Our culture is one of positivity. We want to make sure our patients have the best experience they can. Um, you know, uh, now you can is our kind of our slogan. We want to make sure the patients are surrounded with that positivity uh, to get the job done, to rebuild their lives and to go home. And that's when we know if we're a success. Yeah, absolutely. So Miles for Madonna coming up at the end of September. Um, I participated in this many times, plan to do it again. And uh, it's it's a way for people to get out there and move their bodies and also support the, the hospital. So tell us a little bit about that. It is coming up on Saturday, September 25th. It's going to be at Zerensky Lake once again. Uh, the start time is 10 a.m. It's a 5K for those folks that are really energetic early on a Saturday. Yeah. Or it's a one mile walk, which is what I tend to do. Um, so it's for all ability levels. Um, it's for patients and their families. It's for friends of Madonna. It's for moms and it's for dads and kids and dogs and balloons. It's really fun. Um, inside uh, Miles registration actually starts at 9 a.m. at Sorensky. We'll have the Cornusker Corvette car show. We'll have the kids zone where there's a, a face painting, where there's a balloon artist and games. Um, and, uh, we're really, uh, hoping to break our record last year when we were totally virtual, yeah. we had about 276 runners from, I'm looking at my notes, 12 States and 49 cities. Um, you can come the day of the event and walk or run, but you can also do it virtually this year as well. So we're taking the best of technology and the best of foot power and combining them into one event. And it, it should be a lot of fun. It's a great fundraiser for Madonna, but it's also a great friend raiser for Madonna. A lot of positivity out there. Yeah. And it's always a great time. Again, I know last year you did do it virtually, but one of the things I think with COVID-19, the pandemic that has showed these different races that, hey, let's do it both um, in person and then we can do it virtually. Because like you said, people 12, in 12 states, people were participating virtually. I know I was in Colorado at that time and um, I, I could still support and be a part of this. But, but, but again, come on down because it's going to be truly an amazing event. And it's, it's outside. If you want to wear a mask, please do so. Do some social distancing. But we really want to support Madonna and celebrate these friendships we have in the community after being here for five straight years, including our friendship with you, Andy. Um, I really appreciate you allowing me on your show to get the word out. Saturday, September 25th, 10 a.m. Put your best foot forward for Madonna. Absolutely. It's always great to talk to you, John, and see you, John. And um, I hope to see you in person soon. So, but again, thanks so much for sharing the mission and the importance that this organization and hospital does. You bet. Thank you. And folks, we'll be right back. Well, I am so excited to be here with Dr. Helen Marie Merritt Janor. She is a surgeon at Methodist Health Systems. I'm going to ask you what your specialty is, but I just want to first say thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Andy. I really appreciate the opportunity. I am an adult cardiothoracic surgeon, which means that I specialize in uh, disorders of the heart, the lungs, and the esophagus in adults. Okay. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is 
the Go Red for Women, kind of that movement that's happening, um, that, that has been happening, honestly, for years. But how important heart health is, um, especially like right now, where we're in, I, you know, I don't want to go into the pandemic piece, but having a healthy heart is just so important, regardless of what you're dealing with. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the Go Red event for women started because we recognize that women are different than men in both their presentation and their disease progression for cardiovascular disease. So interestingly, one out of every three women in the United States will have some form of cardiovascular disease, whether it's a stroke, whether it's AFib, or whether it's disease or blockages of the arteries to your heart. And I think that we forget that heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country. So even above breast cancer, lung cancer, all the other cancers, heart disease affects us. So, okay. So let's kind of talk about, um, I want to talk about symptoms first and then prevention, but what are some of the things, because, because what I've heard and I, and, and, I'm, and I've been to, um, this event, um, for years that we talk about the symptoms and they're a little bit different because sometimes there are no symptoms. Yeah. Women can be a, a little bit sneaky. So we think of the yeah. classic symptoms as an elephant on the chest, sweating, nausea, but oftentimes women don't present that way. They may just not feel well. They may um, feel like they have indigestion or GERD and they may write those symptoms off and continue to put others' health in front of their own. So women can present late in their disease progression. And let's also talk a little bit about, um, so when you're not, when you're feeling a little bit off, I mean, what do you, what do you, do. I mean, obviously, you know, you can call the doctor, but I just think it's so interesting because I at times feel a little bit off and I kind of write that off as, you know, either it's stress because you don't want to, you know, I guess talking from a woman's perspective, be like a hypochondriac where every right. time you, something happens that you're thinking, oh my gosh, am I having a heart attack? But should you be thinking, oh my gosh, I might be having a heart attack. Well, I think it always has to be in the back of your mind. I think yeah. you know, dovetailing a little bit into your question about prevention is knowing your risk factor, knowing your family history. Do you have a history of early cardiac disease in your family? Do you have elevated cholesterol? Do you have a high blood pressure? Do you have diabetes? What is your sugar control? You know, are you a smoker? Are you obese? All of those things need to play into high, how high your risk level needs to be and your, your concern level needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you that I mean, that those are great points. Um, knowing, yeah, knowing that risk factor. And, um, but let's get into a little bit of the prevention. I mean, what can we do if, as let's just talk as women to, to take care of this or, or to, you know, prevent it in the word prevention? Yeah. Yeah, I think one big thing is just staying active. And it's easy to it's easier said than done. Uh, to stick to a really regimented exercise schedule. But there are things that we can do, little things that add up. So whether it's going for a walk with your family after dinner, whether it's parking a little further away at the grocery store, whether it's taking the stairs instead of the elevator, all those things can help increase a healthy heart by staying active. Number one thing we can do is not smoke. Um, and I lovingly put these into two categories, things we can modify and things we can't modify, but we can be aware of. So things we can modify are things like controlling our blood pressure, controlling our cholesterol, um, things that we not necessarily are able to modify are things like our family history. We don't get to pick our parents, uh, but we can know that risk and we can talk to our doctor about our family history. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Those are such great points. Cause there are things that you can actively, like you said, um, you have control over like walking and what you eat and what you drink and, and, and all that good stuff. And then there's other things like your family history. Okay. Let's talk about, I know the website, so there's lots of great information out there. Um, and I'm looking at my notes, uh, heart.org slash Omaha go red. That's where there's a lot of information. And again, in this conversation, we're specifically talking about women and, and how we can just be healthy for our communities, for our families, for our kids. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anything else you want to just share with us? And again, 
I'm hoping, um, as we talked before, we got the cameras rolling to have a part two with you, because I think you have an interesting history and story of how you became, you know, into this field, but, but just for the short term, um, you know, maybe what are, can you, can you rattle off like five things that, that as women we can think about or do? Yeah. So I think um, heart disease is not just the blockages in our vessels. It's things like congestive heart failure. When our heart stops beating like it should and starts to struggle. Um, Signs of that might be swelling of your legs. It might be getting short of breath and activities that you used to be able to do without being short of breath. Yeah. Your stroke, uh, that's a major cardiovascular risk factor. It's actually the number one, number three killer in the United States. And it's the number one cause of disability in the United States. Um, And then there's atrial fibrillation, which is a rhythm where the top chamber of your heart quivers and beats out of sync with the bottom chamber and is related to both of those other two. And then obviously the blockages in our heart, which is the number one thing that we have control over in preventing in, uh, in some of our choices. So I have a quick question. So when you're talking about the top part of your heart reading different as the bottom part, do you actually feel that? Or is that something you have to go to a doctor where they you know, where they see that? Is that something that you, you know, as an individual can feel? Some people may feel it. They may feel palpitations. They may feel shaky or tired or a little bit sweaty. And some people may just feel like they have less energy. So if you have any of those symptoms, it's important to talk to your doctor and let them tease out some of those things that it could be. Yeah. Well, again, it's, it's so important and heart health. I mean, I think there's, there's the things that are kind of obvious and then there's the other things that are not obvious. And again, so important for us to, for us as women to be, to be healthy. And that's why I'm, I'm excited about the go red form and this movement that has been going on for years. And Dr. Merritt, I so appreciate you taking the time on, in your busy schedule to, to chat about this. And I look forward to again, having a, a part two conversation with you as well. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. 